Suzy volunteers deliver produce and food baskets to organizations in South America. After battling addiction and depression, a volunteer has found a new meaning in life at the recycling station. Welcome to Dad Headlines, I'm Jenny Lee. Thank you for joining us. The coronavirus pandemic in South America is severe as many social welfare organizations are facing food shortages. City volunteers in Brazil and Paraguay send food baskets to nursing homes and churches. Here's the news. During the pandemic, City volunteers send 30 food baskets to nursing homes in Colarruas. Because they have to eat six meals a day for these elderly people, they need food very much. Due to the epidemic, they receive less help. When we received their request, we came here to deliver food baskets the next day, and they were also very happy. During the pandemic, our situation is very difficult. We're very grateful for donations from our organizations, especially the food baskets brought by Tsuji are really helpful. We are very grateful for all the donations. Of course, thank you for taking the time to deliver these food baskets during the holidays. Thank you, Tsuji Foundation. During the epidemic, the Skada familia in Seda de Alla State continued to provide hot food to the residents. Therefore, city volunteers have provided food materials as logical supplies in April. We thank Tsuchi once again for providing us with food at our food station to give assistance to those who need it most. And sincerely thank Master Zhen Yin and Tsuchi Foundation for providing help to those in need. Thank you so much. In addition, at the monthly distribution for the care recipients in Tsuchi Dea's office, Tsuji volunteers promote vegetarianism and give out items that emphasize environmental protection. When you go to the market to buy vegetables, you can take this bag to hold the items, which is great and comfortable. At the time of the epidemic, Tsuji volunteers gave the assistance to 34 households to get through the difficulties. Anaria is from Ormoc, Philippines. She knew that Tsuji University of Science and Technology had a scholarship program for long-term caregivers. Let's take a look at her story. <laughs> take a deep breath. Okay. <laughs> 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 My favorite subject is the are the professional courses because we were taught on how to take care of the elderly properly from the transporting from the wheelchair to the bed and to the bed to the wheelchair and then also we were taught to how to measure the blood pressure and blood sugar. We asked them to use traditional blood pressure monitors and use this inflation ball and control the speed and how to release it and how to retract it. It is difficult for them to operate. Indeed, there are some difficulties because it is the first time they have come into contact with this instrument. So we slowly increase their confidence. After all, they have to learn to operate this instrument in the future. <laughs> a little high, a little high. Okay. When I got here, I realized a lot of things like taking care of the elderly. It's like, it's like taking care of your own mother or grandmother to your relatives. I think even though I don't understand them, it feels like I it feels like I still understand their language with just by seeing on their facial expressions and also but by smiling you can you can tell them that you are happy and comfortable with them so they don't need to feel like they're alone. So I often smile with them. I've been here last October 28th. It's just that being in here is we are from different cultures and then the teachers here really try to understand us. I mean in the Philippines also they understand us but it's just that really different because we're from other nations but still they treat us very nicely. Because she looks at you. Kiss mama. The teachers here often ask us that 
how have you been? Are you still okay? How are you holding up? It's just that they're not just teachers in the classroom, but also it's like they're a friend to us outside the classroom. It's just that there's like a deep emotional uh, concern between us. I regret being in here because this opportunity is really rare and it's a very, very great opportunity. So it did not cross to my mind for regretting this. If I would go back to the time that I was offered to this scholarship, I would still say yes to this. Master Zheng Yan, thank you for giving me this very good opportunity. I'm very happy that I'm here studying. I really love you very much. Twenty-eight Cixi Kimen volunteers returned to the spiritual home, the Jingzi abode, last weekend, embarking on a journey to find their roots. At the end of the two-day trip, the volunteers returned home with dharma and aspirations. Peace of mind is peace. There's a big foot in the world. What is it? It's land. In the first lesson of Seeking the Roots of the Abode, the Master's humor exposes the truth of life. It is hoped that everyone who enters Zhiji's Bodhisattva path will be able to broaden their minds step by step. Dhamma Master Duan's lecture is very interesting. It also allows us to gain a lot of knowledge. I also hope that every brother and sister, after returning to Jingmen, can feel it in their heart and do Zhiji work more seriously. When Tsuji hears the sound of suffering during disasters, Tsuji volunteers are the first to come and serve. Looking back on history, many can't forget the initial inspiration and the knowledge that enriches the soul. Every time I see the bamboo coin bank over the years, what started with a few cents gave me a deep feeling as this knowledge we will bring back and share with our members. How to be able to live a new low-carbon lifestyle, we should think about what can be done for each aspect of energy saving and carbon reduction. Visiting the educational vehicle for recycling, Jimin volunteers did not miss any details when it came to the classification of recycling. They followed PET bottles on an environmental trip and only then did they realize the promise of recycling. We're in Jingmen and there are not many kinds of recycling. There are only a few actually, but coming here we can see that many things can be recycled. We're all very happy to see this and hope to bring these concepts back to Jingmen. In the two-day journey of finding their roots, these volunteers have gained a lot of inspiration and are more determined to continue their commitment. At Taoyuan Fuqi Recycling Station, the old recycling trucks often broke down. Volunteers Wang Bixue and Zheng Taishan have donated three brand new trucks to help volunteers transport recyclables safely and with less time. Layers of recycled materials are stacked like hills. The recycling truck transports heavy things every day and will inevitably break down after a long time. Taoyuan Fuqi Recycling Station is full of blessings, and this day comes a new recycling truck. Today, this recycling truck is easy to operate. The new recycling truck also has a new feature. It's energy saving when there is only one person to collect recyclables. It's very good today. The city sister asked me to do this, which is cleaner. The new recycling truck was donated by Cixi volunteer Huang Bixue, who loves the earth and gives of herself silently. Cixi Bixue has been inspired to give of herself. Last year, she made her son an honorable donor. This year, she donated this recycling truck in the name of her husband. Similarly, recycling volunteer Zhen Taishun has also been inspired to donate two recycling trucks successively since February this year. The master said that the script of life is written by ourselves. So I donated two recycling trucks in order to make my own script brilliant. It helps a lot because the old recycling truck used to break down very often. Now there are new ones, so they do not need to be repaired, and it's faster for our city brothers to transport recyclables. 
replacing the old and the new recycling trucks to make delivery safer. The three new recycling trucks and recycling volunteers bear the responsibility of protecting the earth together. City volunteers Zhong Qingzhu from Xiamen, China, learned how to make enzyme cleaner in 2011. Since then, she has been improving her recipe. Nowadays, she shares her knowledge with every chance she gets. The perfect ratio of ingredients needed to make environmental enzymes is the result of city volunteer Zhong Qingzhu's experiments. Using enzymes can help reduce the amount of garbage, flowers, and fruit trees will grow differently once we apply enzymes to them. She said juggling that she's like fruit peel herself, who has turned from useless to useful. I've been doing it for so many years. I want to pass on my experience and invite everyone to help make enzymes. After analyzing enzymes for nearly 10 years, Zhong Qingzhu has become a sought-after lecturer at environmental talks. I think she has demonstrated Cixi's humanitarian spirit. Seeing her smile, I can feel her love. I think she has given recycling volunteers a chance to learn Cixi's humanitarian culture. We use our time at home to make enzymes. When there are Cixi missions, recycling work or charity work, I will come here. Zhong has led a frugal life and used her own savings to make enzymes and promote environmental protection. Thanks to her effort, many community schools and recycling stations have started using enzymes. In Fujian, China, recycling volunteer Zeng Yangzhi was once addicted to playing mahjong. Fortunately, after joining Cixi, she started collecting recyclables in her community and got rid of her bad habits. Let's learn more. Carrying the heavy recyclables, recycling volunteer Zheng Yangzhi is willing to shoulder the responsibilities. My waist bone has protruded, so it hurts when I bend down. Despite that, I still have to do recycling. It is hard to imagine that Zheng, who is dedicated to recycling, was once lost in playing mahjong. I was gambling that I did not eat three meals. I lost three U.S. dollars, which is my income for the day. Currently, Zen still comes here, but she's here to collect recyclables. After I quit gambling, I've become happy. I go pick up recyclables. When there is free time, I watch TV at home. I've gained weight now. She has found a new life meaning in recycling and walked out of her sadness. When my husband passed away, I would cry when I looked at his pictures. I look at them every day. Then my daughter said, Mom, you cannot stay depressed. Your health will deteriorate. Go do recycling if you want to. I do not know what to do if there was no qi ji. She collects recyclables in her community daily. Although she has to bend down for the entire day, she said that she feels younger than before. I think I look younger than 32 years old. For 68-year-olds, the second part of her life is just starting. 
The Tsiji Recycling Station in Kelantan, Malaysia opened a book sharing site in December last year. A volunteer uses social media to encourage the public to come and dig for treasures. The piles of recycled materials, including many books and magazines, inspired Hong Wei Chong. Last year, when Kelantan Tsiji prepared the Sutra adaptation performance, we practiced and conducted rehearsals at the recycling station many times. I noticed that many people send their unwanted books to the recycling station. It just happened that the Hokkien Association was hosting Book Crossing, so I wanted to bring this concept to the recycling station. The simple house next to the Kelantan Chiji Recycling Station was given a bookshelf and also attracted community volunteers to help classify books. After Hong Wei Chong shared through social media, many books lovers came to hunt for treasure. The students of our school are not entirely Chinese, and their living condition made them relatively weak in Chinese, so I can't choose those books which are too thick, too complicated, and with too many words. The youth team of the Hokkien Association cooperated with Chiji to host a book crossing project and sent books to two small-scale Chinese elementary schools, increasing students' reading opportunities. To us, students should develop good reading habits from an early age, because reading not only can improve their language mastering skills, but can also increase their knowledge. People can learn plenty of knowledge and life principles in traditional books. I hope to promote reading through this activity at this place. The old books that are originally abandoned gain their second life in the book's crossing site, allowing more people to enjoy reading. The 37-year-old chef Yang Yuqing originally ran a Hong Kong-style restaurant. He switched to cook vegetarian cuisine and gradually even his family is having more vegetarian meals. The vegan Thai Bansidi chili pork is replaced by handmade bean curd, which tastes the same and has no burden on the body. <laughs> Chef Yang Yiqing closed the Hong Kong style restaurant and came here to find a new way for vegetarian food. Carrots have its sweetness, and shiitake mushrooms will also have their own taste. Depending on what materials are needed, we'll blend them. The staff cafeteria upholds the concept of environmental protection and also requires natural products. For steam mix, we'll use the broth to cook. The broth is boiled with vegetables. We try to use less chemical products. When you hold it on top, it will be hot. I was like this at the beginning. Our employees work hard so that they can relax at noon and then continue to work in the afternoon. He hopes that employees who are meat eaters can be vegetarian happily and there are many benefits to the environment. The chicken bones and fish bones in the meat dishes must be thrown away, but most of the vegetarian ingredients can be used. I wanted to switch to a vegetarian diet and he was very happy to help me. I also told him that he doesn't need to open a meat restaurant to stop killing animals. Many relatives and friends are also serving in the factory. The chef Yang Yichun makes vegetarian food, and even his mother eats less meat. My family wanted me to work in the factory, but I couldn't sit still. I can't concentrate on a fixed job. As a chef, I can make changes in the ingredients. If the employees eat up and eat happily, it's my sense of accomplishment. This chef cooks four dishes every day, but the dishes change every day and are quite standard. Receiving praise is like gaining a sense of accomplishment. The dedication of the boss and chef satisfies everyone's test box. The number of diners has not decreased, so it is very comforting, indicating that the chef is very good at cooking. In Taiwan's Dalin City Hospital, a neurologist, a TCM doctor, and a physical therapist have formed a team to help athletes. Let's learn more about this medical team. <laughs> Athletes work hard for the moment they perform on stage. In a short period of time, they must challenge themselves and perform well. Most importantly, they must avoid getting injured. 
In the 2020 National High School Games, Li Xinheng won a championship for the high school freestyle wrestling contest. I beat them one by one. I did not think that I could win the championship with my foot injury. My hard work did not go to waste. Before the contest, Li Xinheng injured his foot, and he almost had to forfeit the match. However, he was the hope for Jai athletes to win a medal. So the Education Bureau sought help from Dalin City Hospital, asking the sports medical team to treat him. Since bone healing takes time, we thought of a way for him to participate in the contest without feeling the pain. Give them confidence so they can learn about their own conditions. Can they participate in the match? For many people, if they did not receive treatment in time, they might lose their chance to compete due to their injuries. The doctor is an expert in the field of sports medicine. He was once the company doctor for the national team and doing university aid. When providing treatment, he thinks about what causes the pain, and he has utilized the concept of sports medicine. We're all doctors, but doctors with concepts of sports medicine will start from the basic and help them prevent injuries. Zhen Xiangwei is an expert in sports. He combines sports and medicine and works as an athletic trainer for the national team. When there are no matches, he takes care of students from Nanhua and Zhongzhen universities. If students need to attend classes and practice at the same time, he might have a hard time healing his wounds. Xiang Wei is a therapist. His skills are superb. He also helps these athletes with passion. I take a smaller role. My role is to diagnose the problems. The rest depends on my two good helpers. Yan Jiechong was once on a volleyball school team. In the medical circle, we say that neurologists are genius. They know everything. We each have our specialties. It is a very special combination. The medical team members complement each other and their personalities match. Dr. Chen Wei Ren works very hard. We got the resources from sports department at Nanhua University thanks to his hard work. Our team leaders, Dr. Yan, to be a fighter, you need bullets. He will sometimes step on the brake and help us plan out our treatment plans. They have to face endless work every day, but they work with a sense of fulfillment. We are passive as patients walk into our clinic room. We are just sitting there and waiting for the patients to come. We are interested in this field and we have the expertise. Why don't we take a more active role? We basically prevent injuries. If we apply the concepts on the middle aged or elderly people, we can enhance their physical abilities. It is tiring, but we are doing it happily. It is great to be able to do what you want to do. On October 21st, Cixi donated 70 blankets to organizations under the Holy See to help refugee women, children, and the homeless. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.